all my fucking science, is this game the shit or what? Banjo-Kazooie is, without a doubt, one of the best games on the N64 and one of the best in the 3D platformer genre as a whole. Taking inspiration from the groundbreaking style of Super Mario 64 and changing it up a bit, Banjo-Kazooie had players visiting vastly different worlds and interacting with a wide range of unique and humorous characters, all within the confines of the evil witch Gruntilda's lair. Like Mario, Banjo-Kazooie could run, jump, attack, and platform their way through their environments and collect shiny MacGuffins that would allow them to unlock even more stages. While Mario had to collect coins, caps, keys, and secrets in order to get 120 power stars and save the day, Banjo-Kazooie had a lot more in the way of things for players to collect. Apart from 10 jiggies in each stage, you also had 100 notes, 5 Jinjos, Mumbo Tokens, Eggs, Red Feathers, Gold Feathers, Honeycomb Pieces, Extra Life, Secret Switches, Hidden Moves... Warp cauldrons, easter eggs, mysterious keys, cheats, bits of gossip about grunty, acorns, gold bricks, worms, Christmas presents, fucking A! And I'm sure I missed something. This game almost single-handedly spawned the subgenre of 3D platformer known lovingly as the Collectathon. However, as much as I love Banjo-Kazooie, there's always been one level that is a bane of my jiggy collecting, one gigantic shit stain on this otherwise great game. Those who are fans of the Baron Bird cringe when they hear its name. Children awake their parents in the dead of night with screams simply from unlocking its doors. A fucking level that just brings all joy and fun out of this beloved N64 classic. I'm of course talking about none other than Rusty Bucket Bay. Oh sure, you may look back on this as nothing more than a bit of a low point towards the end of the game, but I'm here to tell you that this isn't just a brief departure from the spectacularity that is Banjo-Kazooie. No, it's a level that is marred an otherwise perfect game. A level so full of terrible design choices and enough bullshit to fill a barn. <sighs> Don't believe me? Well. Allow me to explain. Things start off nice enough, but that's just so you'll let your guard down. You're facing toward the titular rusty bucket when you start the level, so naturally that's the first place you head. In order to board the vessel, you'll need to cross this ramp, and here's where the first poor design choice comes into play. You see, the central point of the entire level is the rusty bucket itself, and yet there is only the single ramp that connects the ship to the dock. This means that if you fall into the water at any point, your only option to reboard the ship is to swim all the way to this point here, climb up and walk the plank again, or climb one of the two cranes and fall onto the deck of the ship. Well, that's not that big of a deal I hear a few of you say. That's just the designers giving you a bit of punishment for falling into the water. Yeah, except the designers also wanted to be ginormous penis dicks and introduce another Another piece of bullshittery into the mix. Oily water. You know how most land creatures can't breathe underwater? Yeah, well the dipshits at Rare thought it would be a great idea to make it so you can't breathe while swimming on the water's surface in Rusty Bucket Bay as well. I guess the idea here is that the fumes from the oil make the air immediately above the water's surface unbreathable, and I get that. That makes sense. You know what doesn't make sense? The fact that you lose air twice as fast when swimming underwater. How the, what the, why in the fuck does that even work? I mean, you're already holding your breath. How the actual fuck am I losing more air just because I'm under the surface of this BP oil disaster? Because gameplay, that's why. But okay, I'll give Rusty Bucket Bay the benefit of the doubt here and chalk both of these design choices up to end of the game difficulty increase or some shit like that. And I'd even give this level a passing grade if this were all of RBB's gaming sins. Unfortunately, they're not. <laughs> oh no, we're just getting started with this some bitch. Remember how I said the level was difficult to traverse due to there only being a handful of ways to board the vessel? Well, Rare took that dumb fuckery a bit further by choosing to make certain entrances to the inside of the ship almost completely unnoticeable by the player. You see, dotted alongside of the rusty bucket are portholes, standard fare for any cargo ship, but you see some of these portholes are breakable, creating an entrance for the barren bird. Others, however, are merely texture on a wall and don't do jack shit. Telling the difference between these two isn't too bad if you know what you're looking for, but when you're not looking at the portholes as a feasible entrance, you almost have to get lucky in order to break one of these things your first time through, and that's exactly what happened to me my first time. I was just dicking around and BAM! Seriously though, can you tell which of these is breakable and which isn't? Here's a hint, it's not this one. So basically you just have to go around butt-fucking Kazooie's face into each porthole until you get lucky. Oh well, at least all these portholes contains our notes, eggs, and other small collectibles. It's not like one of the level's jiggies is hidden in- ARE YOU FUCKING KIDDING ME?! Okay, so not only is one of the level's most important items hidden in a room that's incredibly hard to find, it's also guarded by some of the most lazy design choices imaginable. Let me break it down for you. So, in order to get this jiggy, you first have to find the breakable porthole on the starboard side of the ship. Then you go inside and there are two enemies in the room. Next, there is a wooden door you must break down in order to get into the, I don't know, shithouse or something, where the jiggy is floating in midair. But as soon as you break down the door, there's one of those sewer pipe things with a green monster that you must kill. And to top it all off, you have to perform a high jump and finally obtain the MacGuffin. This is nothing more than padding. Contrived challenge, if you will. We've already established that the hardest part of this whole ordeal is finding the entrance to the room. and entering the room and obtaining the jiggy should be enough, but nope. The designers at Rare thought, eh, hey, let's put all these enemies into the mix and extend out the gameplay. Nobody will notice that it's really the same difficulty curve. 
The problem here is that none of this extra stuff adds any challenge whatsoever to the task at hand and only creates an opportunity to waste the player's time. Think about it in graphical terms. The most difficult part of getting this jiggy is finding the porthole. After that, the challenge slopes down until you reach another point of interaction, the two enemies in the room, which are easily dispatched. Next comes the wooden door that you have to break down with the same move you used to break the porthole in the first place, so that's even further down the line on the challenge scale. Next is the shithouse monster, which ramps the challenge back up ever so slightly, and finally is the high jump, which by this point in the game is trivial, and finally we obtain the jiggy. Now, imagine that you find the porthole, break it, and inside the room is a jiggy just sitting there waiting for you to take it. On the surface, this may seem easier and less interesting, but let's graph it out. Just like before, we start with the greatest challenge, finding the porthole, and end with the act of obtaining the jiggy. Sure, there are fewer points of interaction along the way, but we end at the same point, and furthermore, both have the same downward trend of challenge, with one being a muddy mess and the other being an elegant conflict resolution. You hear the term elegant design thrown around a lot in game criticism, and this is what most critics, myself included, mean when we say this. It's a question of how many steps are taken to complete an interaction, and more importantly, how many steps within that interaction add to the experience as opposed to just wasting the player's time. And Rusty Bucket Bay is full of these moments designed to waste the player's time, from the fact that you have to stop and activate toll bridges or swim through the oily water to access the outer edges of the map to having to wait for the propellers and spinning platforms to stop so you can proceed more on this room in a sec and it's clear that the developers were trying desperately to slow the player's progression down and when you compare rbb with the other stages in banjo kazooie it's easy to see why because rusty bucket bay is easily the smallest stage in the game yet each time i play banjo kazooie it's the stage i end up spending the most time on not only because of the aforementioned design choices meant to impede the player's progression but because rusty bucket bay is one of the most punishingly difficult levels in video games game history due to a single room, the propeller room. For anyone who's played this far into Banjo-Kazooie, you know exactly which room I'm talking about because you yourself are probably scarred for life from the bullshit that it creates. Let's set the stage! There are two jiggies that require you to traverse through the dreaded propeller room. The first requires you to make your way to the back of the boat, drop down the one pipe that doesn't want to eat your face, kill an enemy, and hit a switch that lowers the speed of the three main props in the other room. You climb back out, make your way to the center of the boat, break a steel door with your beak, not sure how that's even possible, drop down another pipe and enter the room. And let me tell you, this room does not fuck around. Not only does it feature a bottomless pit underneath literally all of it, a pretty impressive feat for a floating ship, I have to say, but what little there is to walk on is moving, spinning, and otherwise not staying the fuck still most of the time, which means you're constantly having to stop and wait and then rush across the platforms when they finally do stop moving. So you start making your way across the room, stopping, waiting, and rushing, and then repeating until you finally reach the large propellers that you slowed down with the switch in the other room, which you jump through and finally claim your prize. Assuming you didn't fall to your death several times along the way, which you probably did. The next jiggy you need to get is located right here at the back of the boat, behind its spinning propellers, underneath the oily water that causes you to lose air twice as quick for some reason. Also, I just want to point out how the propellers are moving yet the ship is stationary. That's not how any of this works. That's... that's not how you boat. In order to get this jiggy, you have to hit the two switches that are located on opposite sides of this room. This, keeping in mind how bullshit it is to traverse this room, is easier said than done. Seriously, trying to make your way from one end of the room to the other isn't so much a challenge as it is an exercise in trying to remain calm, because here's what happens if you fall. You die and go back to the start of the level, which resets all of the notes you've collected along the way, I might add, and forces you to go back into the propeller room to try again. The main problem with a lot of these spinning platforms, however, is that they're hexagonal and don't always stop with a flat side facing up, meaning that you have have to land just perfectly on them or you're going to slide off into oblivion. Land here, you good. Land here or here, you dead. So you die, 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 and fucking die over and over again. Seriously, I died 18 times just trying to get the footage to make this video. What? You want to know just how bullshit hard it is to make it through this room? Look no further than the game's own title screen idle demo. <laughs> Even the developer playing the title screen demo died and they probably used the footage anyway because they couldn't get a take long enough that didn't just feature Banjo sitting around doing fuck all. That is some shit. But after dozens of deaths and probably a few broken N64 controllers, you finally managed to hit both switches. But now there's a time limit for you to make your way across the room one last time and climb back up onto the deck of the boat and swim underwater just to grab the jiggy before time runs out. And yes, I died right after obtaining it. Of course. Fuck. 
If we're being honest though, there is one thing that Rare could have done to make this entire room still challenging but not nearly as frustrating, and that's remove the bottomless pit and add the oily water. Think about it, if your punishment for falling off the spinning platforms was that you had to take your time to swim to a ladder at the beginning of the room rather than dying and going back to the start of the level, it would actually be a fair challenge. It would still be annoying, but not controller throwingly frustrating, and it would actually make sense in the context of the level setting, which is a rusty ship, and it wouldn't be too far out of the question for a rusty ship to have water inside of it while still remaining afloat. But nah, let's go with the bottomless pit because reasons. I could probably go on about how awful Rusty Bucket Bay is from a game design perspective, going more in depth about how its ugly aesthetic, items that require you to harm yourself and the like, but I'd probably just end up nitpicking, so I'm gonna leave it at that. And besides, Banjo-Kazooie is still a fantastic game, and I gotta give the developers some credit for having such a unique level concept. I just wish they would've executed it better. Oh wait, they did execute it better. And in this exact game, no less. Which level is it? Well, here's a hint. Ah, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Ah! Scares the shit out of me every time! Yep, not only did Rare do the exact same concept earlier in the game, but they also did it way fucking better! Clanker is floating in a bay. You can enter multiple chambers of Clanker's insides through various entrances, and we even have a similar plot point of having to go underwater, hit a switch, and raise a chain to free someone, which gives us a jiggy as a reward. The difference being that in Clanker's Cavern, this is a satisfying challenge, whereas Rusty Bucket Bay, there really isn't any challenge at all. Also, the dolphin gets cut in half by the anchor. All the passages into Clanker are clearly marked, and what's this? The main room inside Clanker has water instead of a bottomless pit? What a concept! There's no shitty oily water, you can climb onto Clanker from multiple locations rather than just a single ramp, and the level is much larger, meaning that the claustrophobic rooms and shitty camera angles present in Rusty Bucket Bay are almost completely eliminated. After making such a solid level with such a similar concept so early in the game, it just makes you wonder why Rare bothered to include Rusty Bucket Bay in their level roster. I don't know, maybe it was just bring your booze to work day or something. Dude, fucking stop, please! Hey, what's going on, buddy? What are you doing in here? Oh, oh, I'm I'm just finishing up the, the one of the last levels of Banjo Kazooie. Fuck, dude, but we have an office party going on right now, and you're sitting up. Just have, come have a drink, man. Well, I mean, we we launched in two months, and we still have two levels left to do. So I mean, there's a lot left to do. Dude, what? Just let me take, I got this. What, what, are, you, I, what are you doing? Just, this is, all right. See? It's perfect. Well, I mean, come on, let's have a drink. Well, come on. Oh, I, I guess it's good enough, okay. Anyway, what do you think? Are you like me and think that Rusty Bucket Bay is a steaming pile of horseshit? Because it is. Or do you think that it's a nice challenging level and one of the best N64 games of all time? Let me know in the comments or I'll be forced to do something drastic, like play Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Boats. Ah!